In this video, I'm going to go through AP Precalculus Topic 113, Function Model Selection and Assumption Articulation. A fancy title, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, first, we're going to look at uh, an old topic, a topic we've already we've addressed, of if I have a table of values, how can I tell if we have a linear versus a quadratic function? Uh, so some hints, linear functions, the output values are always increasing or always decreasing. Okay, they can't bounce around, uh, then it wouldn't be a line. Um, and then our big guy is it has a constant rate of change. Quadratic, um, there's some different characteristics. Uh, you may see the values indicate some symmetry. We know a quadratic is a parabola, so if you have multiple outputs with the same value, we may have some symmetry. Uh, constant second differences in the output values. So we've looked at um, first differences and second differences. If the first differences are the same, it's linear. If the second differences are the same, then it's quadratic. Um, and then if we can identify that there might be a minimum or a maximum output value, that would also be a characteristic for a quadratic. Uh, so let's look at this one. Uh, so some observations. My first observation is if I look at these values, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, they are always increasing. Okay, the second thing I'm going to look at is those differences. Since these are equal length input values, I can just look at the differences. So here I'm going up 2, up 2, up 2, up 2, which means we have a constant rate of change. which means our function is linear. Okay, here, my observations. Okay, it's not just strictly increasing or decreasing. Uh, we do appear to have maybe a minimum value here. Okay, which is one of our criteria for a quadratic. There may be some symmetry, so if that's our minimum and then we're symmetric, Okay, but our, our biggest test is going to be those differences. So if I look at the first differences, we're going down 1, up 1, up 3, up 5. Okay, which gives us a second difference of 2, 2, 2. So since we have the second differences are constant, then we have a quadratic. Okay, geometric models. So we're just coming up with different things that model different situations. Uh, so a context involving area can often be modeled by a quadratic function. A context involving volume can often be uh, modeled with a cubic function. So let's look at a scenario here. So I have a family, they're gonna be making a garden. The width of the garden is twice the length of the garden. Uh, so let's draw ourselves a little picture here. Okay, I'm going to call this the width, this the length, and this width is double whatever that length is. Uh, so this first part says, in order to buy fencing to keep the deer out of the garden, uh, write an expression for the perimeter of the garden in terms of the length of the garden. Uh, what type of function is this? So perimeter is the sum of the four sides. So I have my this side, we've got a 2L side, we've got another 1L side, and another 2L side. So my perimeter is going to be 6L, okay, which is a linear function. Okay, now we're going to fertilize our garden. Uh, so write an expression for the area of the garden in terms of the length of the garden. Uh, what is the, what function is this? So we're going to do our area, okay, which is just base times height. So that's going to be 2L times L, which is going to be 2L squared. So just like our, our uh, statement up here, we're involving area, which ends up being a quadratic function. 
Okay. A lot of these real life situations have some uh, restrictions on the domain in the range. For example, with length, we don't want our length to be negative. We don't want our area to be negative. Those wouldn't make sense in a real world situation. Uh, so it says, if the width of the garden cannot be bigger than 10 meters, what is a reasonable domain and range for part B in this problem? Okay, so our width is twice the length of our length. Uh, this is saying the width can no longer, can be no bigger than 10. Well, that means my length can be no bigger than five. So for my domain, I'm gonna say it can be, uh, it has to be greater than zero. I'm not gonna include zero because if the width was zero, then we don't have a garden and we'd be very sad. Uh, but my length is gonna be sandwiched in between zero and it can't be any bigger than five if we have this constraint, which means my range which in this case is our area. Its small end would be at zero. The big end, if I were to plug five into this equation, I'm gonna get an area of five squared, which is 25 times two or 50. So that would be my uh, reasonable domain and range for the situation. All right, next up, we're gonna make a fish tank. A cylindrical fish tank has a height that is three times the radius of the base. So we're going to write that. Okay, write an expression for the volume of the tank in terms of the radius. What type of function is this? If the tank's volume cannot exceed 3,000 pi centimeters cubed, what is the domain and range of this tank? Well, let's start with our formula for volume of a cylinder, which is pi r squared h but we want to write this in terms of just r. So I'm going to replace my h with 3r, okay, which makes my volume equal to 3 pi r cubed. So what type of function is this? This is a cubic function. Okay, then it says, what is our reasonable domain and range for this function? So the domain, which is going to be the radius. Okay, we know we don't want to plug in a negative radius. Okay, but what's the biggest radius we can have if this is my volume? So I'm going to set my volume equation equal to 3,000 pi. And we're going to solve this for r. So I'll divide both sides by 3 pi and then take the cubed root of 1,000, which is 10. So my, and it cannot be bigger than 10. My range, which is volume, is between zero and that 3,000 pi constraint that we were told. Alright, our next scenario, a rocket is launched into the air and comes back down. The height of the rocket is modeled by that equation there, where t is time in seconds and h is height in feet. Uh, so what is the restricted domain? So domain is the time values. Okay, the rocket's going to go into the air, which means my time is going to start uh, bigger than zero, but we want to figure out what the, the limit on time. The time is not, the, the rocket's not going to stay in the air forever. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and graph this. So I put it into my y equals, and here's our rocket's height. It goes up and then it comes back down. My restriction on the, the range is going to be this value right here. Because once it hits the ground, that's, we're done. Uh, so I'm going to calculate this, and I'm going to use that using the calculate a zero feature. We need a left bound a right bound, and our guess. Uh, so this is my upper bound for my time. So that's gonna be 4.062. For the range, our height uh, can't be less than zero. We're not digging into the ground. Uh, the restriction on the height is gonna be this value here. So I'm gonna calculate that menu. This time I'm gonna calculate a maximum. 
Okay, we'll go to the left of our maximum, to the right of our maximum, and we get a height of 68. I'm going to go ahead and include those values there. Okay. Next, average rate of change. Okay, average rate of change, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which in this case is going to be h of 2 minus h of 1 over 2 minus 1. Good news is these are in my domain, so we're good there. If I do that in the calculator, I already have this stored in my y1. So I'm just going to do y1 at 2 minus y1 at 1 over 2 minus 1, which of course is 2, but, or 1, but uh, as we get 16. And this is going to be feet per second. It's whatever the units are on the top over whatever the units are on the bottom. So my next scenario, the cost of mailing a letter is 50 cents for the first two ounces and an additional 5 cents for each ounce or portion thereof. Uh, we're going to first graph this just to see what happens. Okay, So I've labeled my axes here. Uh, we've got the weight down here and then the cost in dollars here. So for the first two ounces, my cost is going to be 50 cents. Then when we add an additional ounce, not gradually, abruptly, it's going to go up 5 cents. I'm going to put an open dot there because if it's two, you're going to pay that lower price. But as soon as it goes just a little bit bigger, it's going to jump up to this next level. Once you get to three, now you're being charged another five cents and so on. Okay, so this is a step function. Uh, the domain. The domain we can plug in. values bigger than zero. Okay, we haven't been given a upper limit. I'm sure there is, uh, but with the information provided, we'll just say the weight is greater than zero. The range, that's the kind of interesting thing here. Okay, because not all values of y are represented. You're not going to pay 51 cents. You're only going to pay 50 cents or 55 cents or 50, uh, 60 cents and so on. Okay, so my range, my cost, is going to be 50 cents plus an additional 5 cents x, and I'm going to say x is a positive integer. Okay, so if I plug in a 1, or I plug in a 2, or I plug in a 3, those are the values I'm going to get as outputs. I'm not going to get every value out. Uh, so this was 1.13. Thank you for watching.